Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the stock program series in Excel. And in this video, we're going to be showing you how to calculate the Bollinger Bands and also how to calculate the ratio on how to figure out where the price lies in between the bands so you can view it more dynamically on one sheet like this. And that's going to be part of basically the whole series that we're doing is we're showing you a lot on how to build this kind of stuff and then also some basic calculations you can add into it yourself. And um, to do the standard deviation in Excel is actually very simple and it's very straightforward. Um, obviously, we're going to need historical data first and we're just going to do Tesla on this. And the standard calculation for um, Bollinger Bands that you see on a lot of your trading platforms is um, basically just the 20 moving average being the middle Bollinger Band and the upper and lower Bollinger Band being the standard deviation times two. And um, I'll show you guys how to do that. So first we're going to need the middle Bollinger Band and the middle Bollinger Band is just a 20 moving average. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to calculate 20 moving averages. So we're going to say equals the average of the last 20 closing prices. So average, boom, that's done. Now what we're going to need is the standard deviation. And to get that, it's its own formula in Excel. So you're going to say equals ST for standard, DEV for deviation, parentheses, um, highlight the last 20 bars like you did in um, for your average and then you're going to times that by two that being the two that you see in every standard um, Bollinger Band calculation and you can play around with those numbers and change them however you want you can do a 1.5 standard deviation which is what I like to do you can play around with um, the Bollinger Band like like the middle like it could be a five moving average or ten a nine you know whatever you want um, but yeah, so that's going to be the 20 MA. That's our mid. Um, and then the standard deviation is here. Now we can calculate the upper Bollinger Band and we can calculate the lower Bollinger Band. The upper being the 20 plus the standard deviation and the lower being the 20 minus the standard deviation. So to get the upper, we're going to say equals our 20 moving average mid BB plus standard deviation. And that's that. And then to get the lower, we're going to say equals the 20 BB minus the standard deviation. And so that's going to be our upper and lower bands. I'll drag these over here so you can so you guys can see a chart. Um, basically, we're going to need all of, all of the data. We're going to need the price, the 20, the upper and the lower. We're going to get rid of our standard deviation. So you can see it on a chart here. We're going to insert a chart, boom, and there you go. There you have it, the gray being the upper, the orange being the middle, the yellow being the lower, and the blue being the price that oscillates in between. And now what we want to see is a ratio. So anything when it's hitting the top like it is here, we want it to be a one or above. Anything when it's hitting the bottom Bollinger Band being a zero or a negative number, and anything in the middle would obviously be 0.5 because it's directly in the middle of the bands. So to do that, all we're going to do is a channel ratio. So how to calculate that is we're going to say equals parentheses, the price, so the closing price, minus the lower Bollinger Band. So it's going to be the close minus the lower divided by the upper Bollinger Band minus the lower Bollinger Band. Close that off so their own its own two equations divided by each other. Hit enter on that. Um, we'll lower the decimals down. Lower that down. We could even add some color into it so we can see. Actually, I'll change the colors to the opposite. And um, so as we get more into the red, that means we're close to the top of the Bollinger Band at 173. You know, see price is at 173, the upper is at 176. When we're in the green, we're kind of more towards the lower. So as you can see, it's at 182. The price of the lower Bollinger Band is at 184. And this being a negative number means the price is below the lower number. 
And that's kind of how you can see it more dynamically. Um, obviously, there's a lot of people that look at it the opposite. They look at one that's at the top of a band to be um, a sign of like strong momentum, things like that. So it all kind of depends on how you view it in the markets. But um, it can kind of give you like a good idea on like one sheet so you can analyze, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 different stocks and kind of see where they're all lying in between their standard deviations and um yeah so that's how you look at that and like i said pretty straightforward um i do videos on how to uh pull this last piece of data onto if you want to check out the video um how to pull this last piece of data and bring it onto another page so you can view it dynamically to where each set of data that comes in it's always going to pull this number and give you a ratio on <clears throat> basically where the stock lies in between the bands and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, if you want to check out that video, I'm also going to be doing a lot of other videos on how to create your own proprietary indicators to Excel and how to calculate a lot of the common basic indicators that are out there on most trading platforms that um, most people use and so forth. But uh, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching, especially if you did this far. Happy trading out there and peace out, guys.